Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to make one quick video, hopefully in less than 10 minutes, on how to uh, use Neat Python in a parallelized environment to train your, for example, Sonic bot, um, you know, multiple threads at a time, hopefully increasing the speed of your training. This requires you to have a computer with multiple cores and multiple threads. Um, otherwise, it's going to be the same or slower than the standard version. Uh, we. What you're going to do is you're going to source env into your previous tutorial environment. That includes all the Jim Retro, the Neat Python, all the stuff already installed. Um, and then if you if you still need help, go review the old um, the old tutorial. It'll set everything up for you. So we're going to work. We're going to start from that position. Okay. So where are we? The first thing we should do is we should copy our. We should get a new. We made a new folder. It's called uh, Parallel Sonic. And we're going to copy in the config feed forward from the previous one. Our population size of 10 for now, okay? Fitness threshold is 100,000. That's the number. If Sonic gets that good of a fitness, the game will stop training and it'll say it'll pickle the file for us. Okay, so let's start. First things first, let's import all the stuff we need. If you didn't follow the tutorial and you're brand new, these are the things you need. I would put them in a virtual environment separate from everything else. Uh, so that it always works as expected. Uh, so retro, numpy as np, cv2, that's open cv, neat, pickle, boom. Okay. Uh, to set up a neat environment, the first thing you need to do is set up the configuration. That's going to link to this file here. These are all the different settings. You can read the webs, the neat dash python um, documentation to get more inf information on that. Uh, we're going to just copy this over because we've already written it. It's literally the exact same one as before. We're going to use the defaults everything, and our file is called config feed forward. See, config feed forward, there it is. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is create a population of genomes, which you can use to play the game. The initial ones are basically random. Depends on what you set in here, um, how much they have. So we're going to start with initial connection partially connected. Half of them are connected. That'll be the inputs and the outputs directly connected. Uh, and then it add and removes connections using these variables. I have them at 50%. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what's good. That's just what I use. So we're going to keep we're going to create one based on our config. All right, so that's our population. Um, the next important thing is we're going to do normally we would do this p we would go winner equals p dot run and then we'd have a function called eval genomes. Uh, that we would call that'll loop through the game, like step through the emulator one step at a time, uh, activating the neural network and recording the fitness. But because we're parallelizing it, we need another one, which is going to be called parallel eval UA tor. And we're going to pass it the number of uh, threads. I have a 12 threaded CPU, so I'm going to use 10. Don't use them all because you know, you need some for general computing as well. And we're still going to call the function evaluate genomes, okay? So this one's going to be PE and um, evaluate, PE dot evaluate, okay? So that's the only difference when you're running with the other thing. We're going to copy in our statistics from previously because why the heck not? This gives us nice output when we're when we're watching it train. We get some output. One of the problems with parallelizing it is uh, the out of order execution of the workers means you can't really record which um, genome you're at. You can set up a thing to like loop through it and be like, this one gets this, this one gets that. But let's not worry about that for now. Let's just let's just crank through this as quick as we can. So we now need a function called eval genomes, uh, and we're going to set it. We're going to give it genome and config. And we're going to call a, f we're going to create a thing called worky, which is our worker. Uh, this is going to be per thread. So we're going to pass it that and we're going to return worky dot work. So each worky or worker is going to have a function called work okay and we're going to return the value of that to parallel evaluator and uh, neat will do all of its magic for us okay so we need a worker class it's going to be an object we're going to initiate it 
What am I doing? How do I even self genome config? So we're going to pass it that. Uh, this is where you could, if you're going to increment numbers per thread or whatever, you can you can do it all here. But I'm just going to be quick and go self genome equals genome self dot config equals config, and then we're going to define our work function. If you guys saw earlier, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do self dot env equals retro dot make uh, sonic the hedgehog if you are properly using your previous environment you'll already have installed all the games if not you need to do the retro python dash m retro dot import and then the path to your roms you need to have the roms they need to, the sha values need to match so if they don't you have to modify sha dot no rom dot sha with the proper sha sum uh, if you don't know how to do that watch the previous video <laughs> So I'm trying to do this before my fiance comes home. So I'm going quick. I will answer all questions in the um, comments. Okay, folks? So no problem. You always have to reset your environment when you first start using it. So let's do that. Uh, we are going to want to know the shape of our uh, environment because we're going to shrink it down by eight. So we can do that with ob, I don't know, we'll call it obs for shape, equals self.env.observation space. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to go index equals int of obs 0 uh, divided by 8. In y equals int obs 0 divided by 8. So those should be uh, 28 and 40 once we're done, because the observation state is 224 but, uh, and 320. So divide those each by 8, and you get 24 and 40. Um, the in thing is just to make sure they're not floats, because I think it comes back as floats. Um, actually, does that work? Just got to kind of make sure that what we're saying works here, right? Env equals retro dot make sonic the hedgehog uh, green hill. I should make a shorter game. And let's go env dot observation space. Yeah. What happens if I do? It does not work. Box does not support indexing. Okay, we won't do it this way then. Let's do OB. Let's just do them all. I'll just chuck these ones out. Uh, equals n self dot n dot step, and we'll do a random action. Okay, so that's just going to uh, give us an OBS here, and then we will do instead of this, we will do dot shape and this should be one and now in x and in y should work okay so traditionally this is where we begin our loop so let's do that well not done we need done oops done equals false just so that it starts well not done we need to oh i lied another thing we need to do is we need a net okay so we're going to go neat dot nn Dot feed. We're going to create a feed forward for how do you network create. We're going to use genome self.genome self.config. Um, so we got our environment, we got our network. So our network we have to activate. Okay, so uh, we're going to create a variable called actions because the output of our network is 12 which is the number of buttons on the um, Genesis controller, right? So there's 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right? So that's what we're going to put into our emulator, and our network's going to learn to pick the right buttons based on what image it gets. So we'll do net.activate uh, image array. We're going to create an array of the... We're going to flatten the... Um, observation space which is just an image of the the game from the emulator so to do that we're going to we took ob from here right and we're going to cv2.resize ob we're going to use in x and in y 
We're going to convert it to grayscale because uh, grayscale is, you know, we, we don't need color for this. We just need to know what stuff looks like. So to do that is CV2 color uh, ob CV2 dot color underscore BGR2 gray, not RGB. I can't remember why, but that's the way it is. CV2. It's just the order that the, the values come in. So I think it actually might be RGB, to be perfectly honest, because when you, it doesn't matter. We'll figure it out some other time. Again, it doesn't matter to the, the network. It just needs to know where things are. All right. We're going to reshape it so that we can dump it into the neural network. And then we're going to flatten it. Image array. Did we declare this already? We haven't. We'll have to declare that. np.nd array uh, flatten ob. Okay. So that's going into our network, and that'll give us... 12 outputs per frame. So we also need to declare uh, image array equals a list. Um, the def.work function needs to return our fitness. So we'll return fitness. Uh, normally we use, let's declare fitness as zero. And while we're here, we're going to declare two variables, expose and expose max. We're going to use those to verify how well our network is doing while he's running. Um, so we're going to take actions from here and we're going to step it into the um, emulator. Info info is where all the variables that we tracked before come from if you if you uh, want to know more about that. Oh, it's the other way around. Rude done info equals uh, self dot end dot step and we're going to send our actions into there, okay? Actions. Um, now we need to set up some way to verify how well our uh, our genome is performing, its fitness. So we're going to use a couple of little functions here. First, we're going to do um, expose equals info. That's the info variable. We're tracking this elsewhere. X is Sonic's exposition on screen, and expose max equals info dot screen underscore x dot what the heck's it called end so these variables again are not they're not they're specific to this game they were set up previously using the gym retro integration service they come with gym retro so when you install them and import your rom uh, there's a json there's two json files scenario.json and data.json they include all of these variables um, this is sonic's exposition on screen and this is the end of the level so those are useful to us so if expose it's greater than expose max, then go expose max equals expose and counter equals zero and fitness plus equals one. Okay, so we need to declare counter as well. Counter equals zero. Um, counter is going to track whether or not Sonic's making any progress because if he doesn't, the game just goes on and on and on. There's no timer, so we need it to. Uh, to terminate if Sonic's just standing still. Expose underscore max equals expose. That's basically setting every every time Sonic gets further along the level, set the new max to that just in case he goes backwards so he stops getting rewards for that. And fitness plus one. Um, basically every new pixel get one more for his fitness, right? So the best performing Sonic is the one that gets furthest to the right. Okay, so if counter is greater than 250, uh, done equals true. So we just want it to terminate if uh, he doesn't get anywhere. And I believe there's one more thing we want to do. Oh, yeah. If um, expose is greater than or equal to expose. Excuse me, guys. Let's not do this here. Expose max will just count as integers. Let's do this. Sorry, I'm just going to go too fast. So basically, if Expose gets to the end or beats the end of the level, um, we are going to add 100,000 to our fitness. And say done equals true. 
This is going to finish our training. So our fitness thresholds is 100,000. Okay, it's going to finish our training. Um, the only other thing we can do, I think we can, oh, we're not going to close it, we'll just leave it open. We can do a print the current fitness. The, again, because we're not actually tracking which worker is worker, it's just going to be a bunch of random numbers that show up, but it's still helpful for figuring out where you are. I believe that's everything. Let's see how it works. Failed. Sample is not defined. Um, hmm. Is it self.env.action space dot sample? Is that all it is? That's what it is. Excuse me. Let's try this again. I'm bad at typing. Has no and there's no S. Okay. What other hilarious errors? Oh, it's working. Okay, so these oh no, we got another mistake. Fitness current. Sorry, I normally call it fitness current, so sometimes my brain explodes. It's just called fitness now, because fitness current is useless. Boom. So there, it started. Uh, you'll see each one of these errors refers to one of the 10 simultaneous environments we're running. And these are the results. Oh, these are the results from them. So there you go. We went through 10 in, uh, where's the time? Nine seconds. All right. So there you go. That's how you parallelize it. So you can you can crank this up to as many, you know, a slightly less than the number of cores or threads you have on your computer. Uh, you can also increase the population size because now obviously it go through more. The bigger the population size, the better the neat algorithm works. So, you know, push it. Okay, folks. Uh, oh, sorry. You know what else we should do? We should just quickly, we should remember that once we have our winner.env, we can pickle it. And if we pickle it, we can use the playback. Okay. That's that. If you want to watch it happen, you probably need to do the CV window viewing of the observation variable before it gets transformed. Because uh, if you use self.render, I'll show you what happens. Self.env.render, uh, it gets hilarious really quick. So it's going to open up 10 <laughs> at a time. And then when they terminate, it doesn't close them. It just opens up new ones. So you're going to quickly destroy your screen. Which is funny, but yeah. <laughs> Sonic. There are workarounds for this, but this should be good enough for now. Okay, guys? Enjoy. <laughs>